Hi friends. <clears throat> so we're just about ready to get started with our next unit. And our next unit is going to be da, 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 pop art. So pop, P-O-P, -P, pop art happened in the 40s and the 50s. So it's predating the artists that we've been looking at before this. Okay. Um, we are going to learn how to use our value scale and draw a Wayne Tebow, like T bow style drawing. Okay. I'm going to show you how to use value. We're going to practice our value scale. And I'm going to show you how to wrap a pattern around an object. Okay. So today, it's just going to be practice. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to tilt the camera down. And I want you guys to draw along with me. Okay. So we're going to practice our value scale. So for example, we're going to do our value scale like this with the hardest pressure here, medium pressure here zero pressure here. So it's coarse shadow, mid-tone, and highlight. Okay, And it's exactly like the table. So take a look. These two things are exactly the same. I'll, I'll show you the diagram. Sorry. 10, pushing hard, coarse shadow, 5, Push in medium, like half as much as 10, and zero highlight, like right here on the edge of the table. Not pushing very hard at all. Okay, And that gives the appearance of um, objects pushing back in nature. So it makes the table look like it goes back. Because remember when we were talking about color and saturated color goes back? If your color has a lot of hue in it, right, it goes back. And if it's like a higher tone, if it's a higher value, it comes forward. So darker goes back, lighter comes forward. Okay? And then we're going to practice um, putting it onto the cone shape. Okay? So here, here's the 10, here's the 10, the 5 is right here, the midtones here, midtones here, and the zeros in the middle. Dark values push back, light values push forward, pull forward. Okay? Um, also, on the inside of the cone, you can see uh, the 10, 5, and 0, only this time the 10 is like closest to the lip, the 5 is in the middle, and the 0 is on the tip. And that makes it look like it goes down into the cone. Okay? And then we're going to practice wrapping a pattern around an object, and I'll show you how. Okay. So what you need for this um, little practice project is a sheet of paper, and a sharp pencil, okay? If you're a sixth grader, you can use your crazy pencil like this, okay? Um, here is the image that we're working with. This is a drawing by Wayne Thiebaud. He was a pop artist, okay? And I'm going to show you how to get started. So I'm going to tip my camera down. Just like that. Here's our paper. Let's pull it this way. There we go. And I'll put this, like, so you can kind of see it, right there. And here's the finished drawing. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe. Yeah, I think you can. All right. So step one. I'll turn it this way so you can see it. Move my stuff out of the way. Probably one an eraser too. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna scoot this. Step one. Let's draw the table. And I'm kind of drawing upside down, so it's a little bit weird for me doesn't matter what value, like if you have three pencils, we're talking about that later. So please draw a rectangle like this. No big deal. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? And on the rectangle, put a zero at the bottom, a five in the middle, and a ten at the top, okay? Got it? And then please write, and I'm not going to write them upside down, I'll just show it on the camera. Please write core shadow next to the 10, and then write hard pressure, and then write mid tone in the middle, and write medium pressure, and then write zero highlight, and then lightest pressure. Do that first, and then write value scale at the top. Okay? Got it? And then on the side, let me see if I can find this. On the side, it says, um, sorry, 
it says smooth transitions with an arrow like that. So you have to have smooth, that's like a reminder. So please write that as well. And then you can write drawing with value at the top. Okay? So I'll do it too. Uh, I can't do it upside down though. <laughs> so you know how to write those, right? Okay. So 10 is your core shadow. And this, whenever you do a 10, a number 10, it's going to be like the hardest pressure that you can muster. So it's going to be a little, you know, a little tricky. So you take your pencil. And you start, and you're going to go the whole way across. And remember, we're practicing for the table. It's the same thing. This drawing is the same thing as the table. So I don't want you to feel so overwhelmed. I'm just showing you. I'm breaking it down into its simplest pieces. Because, and don't worry about keeping it in the box. It's not a big deal. When you break a drawing down into its simplest pieces, it's not as hard. Okay. So here's my core shadow, my number 10. And now I'm approaching the 5. I'm just kind of working my way down. This is the longer. Normally we do a value scale the other way, but I wanted to show you how we're going to do the tabletop. And then and I get to my 5, and it's like half the amount of pressure, okay? And right here where it says <clears throat> smooth transitions, that's what I mean, is you want a smooth transition from your 10 to your 5 to your 0, okay? So not choppy, not like a paint chip. And it's all done with pressure. So when you're drawing, you should be able to feel it. Like I can, some I could probably do this with my eyes closed. I'm gonna see if I can do it with my eyes closed. You can't tell that I have my eyes closed, but I kind of do, because I know I'm half the pressure of the ten, so I can feel it. Okay, I opened my eyes. <laughs> okay, so now I have the number ten, and I can even go back and just like make it a little darker, because I really want that to be dark. Right? And remember, this is just homework. This is like before we do the drawing, I want you to get good at how we put the pieces together. Then when we do the drawing, it'll be super easy. Right? And not so overwhelming. Okay. So now I have my 10, which is a core shadow, but you've already written that down. Right? I can't write it upside down unless you want me. Nah, I'll, I'll write it later. 10 is a core shadow. Five is a midtone, zero is a highlight. You should have these written down before we get started. Okay? Okay. All right. So now I've got half my pressure, and now I'm headed to my highlight, which is a zero. So then, by the time I get to the zero, it's like half as much pressure as the midtone. So I kind of go like that. And I'm just going to go down the line and do the same thing. Just like this. That's not a big deal, right? It's a little tricky because I am drawing upside down. I need to figure out a different way. Maybe I'll move my... Okay. So, like, you can go back in then and just, like, fix spots where you felt like it was a little bit messed up or whatever. Okay. So, this is the basic component of doing a really nicely done drawing. There's no difference between this drawing and this drawing. The only difference is that I've wrapped the value around the cone and around the ice cream. And I'll show you a little trick I did with the ice cream and I'll show you that separately. And I just did my value scale right here. It's not a big deal, right? So now you have pretty much the table. If you wanted to get like super tricky, all you would do is you draw like another rectangle right here. And you do it again. You'd start with your darkest, like this. And suddenly you have what looks like, like a little table or a plank of wood, right? It's super easy. Once you understand how to push and pull with your value, dark values push back, and light values come forward, you can make things look round. It's not like a big deal, like at all. Trust me. Once you get used to the idea of it, it comes much easier if you can kind of figure out um, where to place your darkest value and where to put your lightest value. Okay, look, now you have a table. Pretty similar to this drawing, right? Easy. That was how I did it. Super easy. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to practice 
drawing spheres. So these are spheres. It's actually an ellipse. This is a cone, right? This is a cone. This is a cone, but at the top of the cone is what we call an ellipse. And I need, like, I'm going to show you something with it. Okay. So here's what an ellipse is in nature. So here's my coffee cup. I had to take the lid off. I hope there's no coffee in it. Hold on. Okay. Here's a circle. There is coffee in it, so I'll be careful. Okay. So when you look at a circle straight on, it's just a circle, right? But when a circle turns in space, don't spill the coffee. <laughs> Look at that same circle, right? Look at that same circle. When it turns in space, it becomes an ellipse. See it? Okay. And that's how you get the um, the the idea of of something looking three dimensional. Because rarely do we look at something like this head on. Usually we see it from above and a little bit uh, far back. Okay. So you would see an ellipse instead of a circle. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three ellipses. And here's the trick to drawing ellipses. It's like a racetrack. You just get your hand going pretty fast, like in ellipse shape, and then you just lower it like this. Right? There's an ellipse. There's one. I'm going to do it again. There's two. There's three. Okay. Now you do it. Okay, one, two, three. And then when you're done, turn them into cones. Like that. That's not a big deal. It's easy. We just made a cone. Got it? All right. Okay, so for the first one, I want you to practice this. So can you see the zero, the five, and the ten? The zero the 5 and the 10. The difference is I put them inside I put them inside the cone so it looks like it's going down. So I've written 10, 5, 0. That's core shadow, mid-tone, highlight, right? So I'm going to just do the same thing here. I'm going to start with my 10, like right here, which is heavy pressure, like this. And I'm just going to shade it. Shade, 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 shade. And then I'm transitioning to my 5 which is like this. And I know that our um, cone is going to have a scoop of ice cream on it, but that's okay. I wanted you to get the idea of how um, a value scale can give the feeling of roundness and of depth. Okay, so here I just did 10, right here, 10, 5, right here, mid-tone, and 0, highlight. And suddenly my cone looks like, you know, it's hollow, right? Excellent. Okay. Um, the next one we're going to do is we're going to wrap the value scale around the cone. So here, look at it again. Here's the 10, hard pressure. Here's the 5, mid-tone. And then we go 0, which is the highlight, 5, which is the mid-tone, 10, which is the core shadow. Why? Because darker values push back, and we want this to feel like it's conical, right? So dark values push back, and light values push forward back and forward. That's the push and pull of your page, right? So all you do uh, in the second one is I'm going to just start with my 10 like on my edge like this. And this is going to be the open part, so I'm going to leave that like that. Okay. So I'm going to do my 10. And you might want to have a pencil sharpener and eraser handy. Okay. And I think you all should have an eraser. <clears throat> I'm going to go back over my 10 because I don't feel like that's dark enough. And my pencil really needs to be sharpened right now. I might use another one. This is an HB pencil. I'll talk about the the numbers and the letters that are on your pencils. Okay. And then, then here's my 5, which is um, right here. Here's my 5. And then I'm going to go to 0, and then I'm going to go back to 5, and then I'm going to go to 10. So watch me do it. Here's my 5. Table's in the way. You see? And now I'm heading to 0. 
and I'm not comfortable drawing, so I have to turn the paper just a little bit. Because remember how I said it's important to be comfortable when you're drawing? Well, I'm not. <laughs> so I have to turn my paper, but I'll show you when I'm done. So there's my 10. Because dark values go back, push back, and light values pull forward, right? That's how we make something look round. It's no big deal. It's that smooth transition that you got to get good at. That takes some practice. But it's like anything. It's like playing guitar or typing or singing. You want to have a smooth scale, right? A smooth value scale. Here's my 10, so I'm going to push it back a little bit more. And I'm transitioning to my 5. So it's, let's, let's look at it again. It's 10, 5, 0, 5, 10. Dark, medium, light, medium, dark. And that gives it the conical shape. So 10 needs to be pretty dark. That's the heaviest pressure you can do, right? So I'm going back and I'm pushing pretty hard, like right on that edge. And the outside of a, edge of a drawing is called a contour edge. That's a pretty important thing. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Contour edge shows you the direction to shape. But right now, I just want you to get the idea of push and pull with value. Same idea that we did on this drawing, where we pushed it back with more intense, like soaking it with hue intensity, and this was left light. Dark pushes back, light pulls forward, even in color. Okay, So in graphite, it's the same idea. Dark pushes back, and light pulls forward. And then to get this one even better, I'm going to have you guys do this. Now that we have, like, just like this drawing, now that we have uh, 10, 5, 0, 5, 10, 10, 5, 0, 5, 10, okay, just like this, um, I'm going to have you do this one over here too. So I know that I'm going to start dark right here, right? Let me make sure you can see it up top. With my 10. And I know we're going to put ice cream on top of this, but I want you to get the idea of what you can do with value and how to control it and like how you can make it work for you if you want to make it a drawing feel a certain way and you want to visually you know, fool somebody's eye, this is how you do it. Just push and pull. So it's the same. 0, 5, 10. 0, 5, 10. Okay. Get it? So now I have a pretty good looking cone, except for I feel like it's missing something. It's missing the little lines on it, right? So this is how I did this one. And, and you know, hang with me on this one. I got my pencils. They're going to fall. All right, so here's my ellipse. And I'm going to just sharpen up that line a bit. And then I'm just going to go and make tiny little dots as guidelines. Don't make them big because I don't want you to have to erase them. And keep them evenly spaced. And you can put them as close as you want as long as they're evenly spaced, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm not even measuring. I'm just doing visual dots like this down the way. Okay, so there it is. All right, so this gets a little tricky. So watch me, okay? So I, and this is a dot, and this is a dot where these two meet, okay? So I take my line and I'm going to curve it, right? Um, to make something look like it's three dimensional and it's got a pattern on it, you got to bend the line, right? So if I were to just like do stripes across it like this and then flat stripes across it like this, it wouldn't look three-dimensional. Like if you envision somebody wearing a striped shirt, um, even the stripes are curved, right? Okay, so I want you to watch me because I'm taking this top dot and I'm going to this first dot down here like this. I'm curving it. That might get a little tricky for you, but I don't want you to be frustrated. It's not a big deal. Okay, and then I'm doing the same thing here. I'm curving it to the next dot, curving it to the next dot, curving it to the next dot. So eat, these dots are like one step down, right? And I don't think I made these dark enough, so I'm just kind of like. And if you want to fudge this a little, all you got to do is remember that you're doing an angled curve like this, right? 
and I'll show you what to do next. I gotta flip this to do the next step, okay? Then I'm gonna start at the top again. Let's make sure you can see me. And I'm gonna make kind of an X. And then I jump down like that. And this isn't perfect. I'm kind of messing it up a little bit, but it's not a big deal. I mean, like, as long as you get the idea, and normally I don't put the dots there, but kids get frustrated with this with this idea, and I don't want you guys to get frustrated. You don't even really, like, need to do the dots. You just need to have a bunch of bent X's that make the waffle of the cone. Make sense? Okay. Um, and we're going to practice that part, too, okay? Okay. Then, on top of it, I want you to do the same thing you've done over here. So, like, when you have a pattern, and today the pattern is the waffle of the cone, um, the shadow would fall on top of it, right? Because the shadow is being created by light. And the pattern is actually a part of the waffle cone, okay? So, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but when light falls on top of something, you're going to just shade right over top of it, and I'm going to do the same thing over again. I'm going to do 10, 5, 0, 5, 10, okay? So here's my 10. Maybe I'll start over here. You, you know, you don't have to do it exactly the way I do. I just want to make sure that you understand that dark value pushes back and light value pulls forward. And that's how you make something look 3D, right? And it's that smooth transition between the 0, 5, and 10 that makes kind of a big deal difference. I'm just making sure you can scooch this a little. And I don't want you to get like freaked out or stressed out about this drawing. It's not a big deal. We're just going to try our very best because, you know, why not? <laughs> and I think it always helps me, like if I practice the drawing first, if I can break it down into some easier steps. That's why we're doing this practice drawing, okay? Because when it comes to doing like the finished drawing, you're gonna you're gonna totally know how to do it, right? Hey, yep, it won't be hard. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do? It's not perfect. But, oh, this is just practice. Who cares? What I'm going to do after that, because I'm trying to like really get my 10, 5, 0, 10, 5, 0, 5, 10. Yeah. Some transitions. Like that. And it's all with your pressure. Okay. Then I'm going to add this, like this. So uh, 0, 5, 10. So. Just the same way. Oops, I got it upside down. I'll try to turn it around for you guys. Okay. So, like, by the time you get to the bottom, the third one, you're pretty much done making a 3D comb. I think that makes sense, right? And we're just going to practice that. I was going to show you guys how to do the ice cream today, but I think I might just do that later. I might do that in a separate video because you guys are coming back to school. Yay, pretty soon, right? So I will be seeing you super soon. And when you come back, we'll start this drawing in real time, okay? All right. So I think that's pretty much it, okay? Again, I want you to write all of these things down, and I'll try writing it down with you. Okay. Can you see me? Yeah. So this is called a value scale, V A L. U E scale S C A L E right okay and then I'm gonna say smooth transition T R A N S I T I O N S transitions okay and then please write ten five and zero and it's a highlight it's this is a highlight highlight this is a mid tone. And this is a core shadow. And those of you that have had me before know that I, I push this a lot because this is a big deal. Okay? All right. And then, let's see. We can just do one of these sections here. We'll just go like this. I'll put a little graph right here. And then you can go 0, 
five, ten. And that way you know highlight, midtone, core shadow, right? And that tells you where it goes, okay? All right. Um, and then the pattern. If you have a hard time with the dots on the edge, don't worry about it. Just realize that you have to start at the top, curve it, curve it, curve it, curve it, curve it. Because like I said, somebody that's wearing a striped shirt, you know, it still would curve around their body. It's not going to just be like flat striped, right? If we were to do this, like stripes like this, and then up and down, it's totally going to flatten out the drawing. Don't do that because you want to fool the eye, right? You have to curve the stripes. So don't put stripes on like that, okay? Curve the stripes. And then I'm going to go here, 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 here. And it's an ice cream cone. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm already kind of messing it up, but I don't really care. It's not a big deal. Okay, so then you have the basic idea of the ice cream cone, okay? All right, so here's our graph, drawing with value, value scale, value scale, 10, core shadow, 5, mid-tone, 0 is the highlight, right? Oops, the highlight's right here. Yeah, and in this drawing we did another little value scale for the edge, like that, okay? With smooth transitions. Then you do three ellipses, one, two, three. And remember, an ellipse is a circle <laughs> this turned in space, okay? Because when somebody is standing looking at something, we're not always looking, you know, straight at the camera or straight up and down. We're looking at it from an angle, right? So that's why you draw an ellipse. And you make your triangles, one, two, three on the first one. Do this deal where it's zero, uh, five. How do you make a five? <laughs> zero, five, ten. Okay. So highlight, mid tone, core shadow, and then you do the same thing here. Ten, five, zero, five, ten. So right, if I go like this, it's gonna be ten. <laughs> I don't know how to write them. Say no. 10, 5, 0, 5, and 10. Okay. Oh, that one's backwards. <laughs> you know what I mean. 10. Okay. So that makes sense, right? Then you have something that's looking pretty conical. Time interruption. Oh. Hey, Zach. If you have a first hour and are assigning lockers, if you could please meet later. Sorry about that. It's just talking about assigning lockers to you guys. So, yay, you're coming back, right? It's going to be fun. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just getting ready for school. All right, so 10, 5, 0, 5, 10. You've done it on this one, and you've done it on the inside. So now you have something that looks pretty much like a, like a cone, right? And then you're going to add, this is probably the trickiest part, you're going to add the bent lines on top of it right? As long as they're curved and not straight. Don't do straight up and down lines. That's not going to look right, okay? So it's like you have a bunch of X's on your page. I hope this looks right because I'm kind of going over top of my old drawing and that's not good. That's looking a little sloppy. But don't stress about it. That's why we practice, all right? Yeah? All right, and then I think we're good to go. In the next video, I'll show you how to make this part, and we're going to put it all together like a building. Sound good? Moving day. Oh, I named it Moving Day because I'm just getting ready to sell my house. I wondered why. <laughs> I forgot to put that there. So, yep, that's just a little thing that I did. No big deal. All right, I'm going to say goodbye. So tilting up, turning it. Okay, so again, our artist of the day is Wayne Tebow, and he is a pop artist, and we're going to be studying pop, out, uh, excuse me, pop art for the next week, okay? All right, so practice your value scale, please, and thank you. Practice making your ellipses, right? Practice putting your, um, 
your um, pattern on top, okay? All right? And by the time we get ready for the drawing, you're going to have all these pieces together. And we just have to put the little cherry on top. Ding! <laughs> okay, my friends. I will see you real, real soon and sooner than you think because we're getting your lockers ready. All right? You take good care, and I'll see you soon.